Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to talk about TTS Begin and TTS Commit statements in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations. I find that many people don't really understand um, what these statements do, or if they do, um, there's some nuances, some special cases that um, catch them off guard or confuse them a little bit. So I wanted to go in and explain what they are from the very basics to the more complex um, relating to unbalanced TTS blocks, nested TTS blocks, all the rest. Um, so let's get started. So what we're talking about here is these TTS begin and TTS um, commit statements um, in X++ code. What they serve to do is to create a transaction block for data changes that happen in between them. Um, they basically store all the changes that we're making to one or many records in memory, and then we don't actually commit those data changes to the database until we get to this TTS commit. Um, and this is really powerful. It's really helpful for a number of different reasons. Um, functionally, uh, consider an example. Let's say you're creating a sales order from some integration. Maybe you create the sales header and the system starts creating one of the many sales lines. It's able to successfully create two sales lines. And then on the third sales line, it runs into an error. Well, wh what do we do? Do we just leave? that sales order with the two sales lines and the other many sales lines uncreated, the payments uncreated, whatever else. Um, no, that would be a bad state. We'd essentially have corrupted data. So what we'd like the system to do in that case, when we have a hard error that we can't handle and can't proceed, we'd like to roll back all of the data changes that we've made since we started that particular process. And that's what TTS begin and commit statements um, allow us to do without any additional coding, which is really phenomenal. So if an error happens in this particular example, in our update statement, maybe there already exists a customer with the same customer account number, um, the system's gonna throw a hard error and then the system's gonna roll back to where this TTS begin is. So TTS begin and commits are both used for grouping a bunch of changes together and committing them to the database all at the same time. So we don't have um, any processes reading data too early when it's not complete. It also allows us to revert data back um, to a TTS begin state um, whenever a uh, hard error occurs. Um, and we can do that again without specific coding, which is phenomenal. Um, so let's, you, you know, there's many other examples, just I like using examples so you really get the point. Like when creating a customer, there's usually way more than just the cus table. What's getting created behind the scenes is um, an address. So you might have a dirt party location, logistics location, logistics postal address, logistics electronic address. If you're using um, an email or a phone number, you, you also have to define whether it's a person or an organization. So there's dirt party table, dirt person person, their person name, and their organization. All those records get created um, in this type of system. D365 is a normalized database. You might hear that term normalized versus denormalized. Denormalized is when we have one really large record with a ton of columns, and you might have a lot of that data duplicated between each record, whereas a normalized database means we're going to have many tables that all relate to each other and that speeds up our ability to um, look up that data it makes the data smaller um, so a lot of benefits of a normalized database but it's all that more important that we're using these TTS begin and commit blocks to ensure that all the data needed for a certain concept of an idea like a sales order or a customer get created together all right, so let's jump into a little bit more code. Here's our most basic example, right? If you're not familiar with how to write a select statement or updating data um, in Dynamics, I recommend you check out this article on how to update data in um, D365. Um, that'll kind of give you those main um, basics there. 
um, but then jumping back in, we're using this select for update cus table where cus table account num equals a particular account num. We have a TTS begin before we start making changes to this record. We set new values, then we call update and we call TTS commit. So there's two things that are required here. One is we have to have a TTS begin and commit around an update statement. Um, and with that, I wanted to take a little bit of an aside. This confuses, I think, even experienced developers. The places where we have to have a TTS begin and commit is when we're calling update or do update, or we're calling delete or do delete. We don't actually need to have a TTS begin and commit around an insert statement or an update underscore record set or an insert record set or a delete underscore from any of those statements. We don't technically need them. We may still want them for the sake of what we talked about earlier in our transaction block as a whole, but um, we don't technically need them um, to make the data change. Whereas for an update or a delete, if you don't have a TTS begin and commit, um, then the data will run, the X++ code will run, but your data will not change and it will confuse you a whole bunch. So make sure that you've got a TTS begin and commit around each of your update or delete statements. The other thing we have to have is we have to have this keyword for update. If we don't, then we're not telling the database that we're gonna update this record and it won't let us make changes to it. One exception to this is technically you could leave the for update off and there's certain cases you know where you may want to in code and then you can use this other method select for update pass it true and then you can call update but you must have either this select for update or for update in your select statement to make that change um, and, and I recommend this first approach if you know you're gonna update the record all right one more example, just to really prove the point of how this works, let's look at this update method. If I right click and I say go to definition, I can see there's a lot of base Microsoft code within this update method. And it may even update or insert into other records. If I scroll down here, I can see that there's this business relation table. So if I step into this method as well, I can see that the business relation table actually gets updated or may get updated when I'm updating the customer. So uh, again, we're, we would be wrong to think only the cus table record gets updated. It's more than that. I can even see here if the customer group gets updated, which is actually what we're doing here, um, there is this forecast sales method that gets run and it's gonna go through, loop through all the forecast sales records and update those with our new customer group ID. So um, again, it's important to understand that um, these TTS beginning commits are there to help un, you know, commit all of that data and um, keep track of all the many records that may get updated. So let's go back um, to our basic example. The next thing I wanna talk about is where to place these TTS beginning commits. You're gonna see them most of the time just directly around an update statement like that, but you might have some more complex examples. So let's look at this while loop example. We look at this code right here. I've got a while loop or a while select loop. It is looping through customer records where the customer group is 30 and it's changing the customer group to 80. Again, kind of a silly example. In this case, I've got TTS begin and commit around the update, and I've got it inside this while loop. That means each time we loop through this loop and we make this change, it is committing these changes to the database. And um, this is really important because if an error happens, say on the thousandth and first record, all only that very last record will get reverted back it, the system will essentially revert the data changes to the state it was when this tts begin was last run all the rest of the records will still be saved 
and that's really useful. That's often what you want. Um, that way you're not you know, chugging away on some process for multiple hours and, or minutes or whatever it may be. And then um, when you revert back, all of that's lost. By keeping the TTS begin and commit, you're keeping all the progress you've made and you're only reverting back the error that, um, that was thrown. But another approach, which is worthwhile to think about, is to put the TTS begin and commit around um, a while loop or a block of code that is making a number of changes. In this case, if an error occurs in this update, I'm gonna, you know, the system's gonna roll back to whatever the state of the data is when TTS begin was run, and that means all of these records that were changed um, get reverted back. And that may be what you want in certain situations. You might say it's only valid if all of these changes are, can be made at once. If any one of them fail, I don't want to do it at all. That's true of maybe invoicing a sales order, right? When we invoice a sales order, there's a lot of journals and financials that get updated. We don't want to make just some of them. We, it, we, can only, we only want to commit those changes to the database if all of them can be made and they can all go into the database at the same time. And that's what TTS begin and commit does. So it's really important to think about where you place these. Is it inside a loop, outside a loop? Um, it, um, and then that really leads me to our next topic, which is nested TTS begin and commits. So I'll open up this file over here. So you can actually nest TTS begin and commits where you have more than one, right? I've got one right here, TTS begin commit around this statement, another around this statement, but then I've got one around the whole thing. So how do those work? Um, and basically the quick answer is that nothing is committed to the database until this final TTS commit um, is um, written and run. Um, so basically, it's always important. I, I kind of think about them kind of like curly braces. Um, you can have a bunch of them, but we're really looking for when the TTS commit statements equal the number of TTS begins. And once that number equals um, the, the TTS begin, that's when the data is committed to the database. So to kind of follow through more explicitly, right, I've got one TTS begin, two TTS begin, so that's two here, and then I've got one TTS commit. Now I've got a third TTS begin and a second TTS commit. Now it probably is not gonna fall into here, but if I did, I'd have a fourth TTS begin and a third TTS commit. But until I actually get a fourth TTS commit where it matches my um, TTS begins at that point, now they're equal and um, we uh, commit to the database. If you look at something called the TTS level, you're going to see that increase for each time you have a TTS begin, it's going to decrease each time you have a TTS commit. And once that reaches zero, meaning they're equal, that's when it commits to the database. So it's really important to know that. We st it's still useful to have these inner TTS begin commits because you may not know which if statement you're gonna follow into and you need to have them for an update. Um, maybe you're calling a method and that method has the TTS begin and commit around it. So those are always fine, but it's useful to know you're not actually gonna get to the database until this last one um, within a given block runs. Now you may go on to run another bit of code that has TTS begin and commits with its own transaction block, um, but once they're even, they commit to the database. If you were to open up SQL Server Management Studio in the middle of debugging this code, and you were to query these records and see if they've changed, you'll see that they have not actually changed in SQL Management Studio. They're all kept in memory until this very last TTS commit. And at that point, after you've run the statement, if you were to rerun your query within SQL Server Management Studio, you would see the changes have committed. So definitely some complexities there. All right, couple more things. 
unbalanced TTS begin commits. So sometimes people will be running code and they'll receive an error message that looks like this. An unbalanced X plus plus TTS begin commit pair has been detected. Causes of this include too many or few TTS begin or commits, return calls within a TTS commit pair, or user action within a TTS begin and commit pairs. Um, and so this is a common error that people see and they don't always know what changes they need to make. And so um, basically what happens is something like this, where you have a TTS begin and then you've got a TTS commit inside some kind of conditional block. So, you know, if the system goes into this block, then we're fine. We're going to leave this method with the matching pair of TTS begin and commit. But if it doesn't come into this if statement, then we're gonna get to the end of this method and the system's gonna detect that we have a TTS begin and no matching um, commit within this scope. And it's gonna throw that error message. Uh, unfortunately, the compiler's not smart enough to detect that this could be a possibility when you compile, so it's gonna let you do it. But then at runtime, you're gonna experience this. So again, my recommendation would be to treat TTS begin and commits like you do curly braces, where you're always making sure that you've got a matching pair within the same level. So here's one other example that can happen um, with a return statement. So let's say you've got a TTS begin and then inside some conditional statement, you've got a return and you haven't called TTS commit yet. Well. That's a problem, right? Because now we're leaving the method with an unmatched pair. We really need both of these TTS beginning commits to be inside here and before the return. And again, the compiler is not gonna catch this in this particular case because the return's inside of a conditional statement. It um, doesn't understand that this code's not always gonna run um, and that these are gonna cause a TTS beginning commit error. All right, um, so that's really it. I think um, there is something called TTS abort, um, but I'm not gonna cover that in the scope of this article, but basically it does, uh, it reverts back to the TTS begin statement, reverts back the data. There are some special cases where you may wanna use it. Most of the cases though, you're, you're just gonna throw an error and the system's automatically gonna do um, that for you. Um, but we can cover that in um, another lesson. So that's really it. There is some Microsoft documentation on this, but there's not a lot. Um, so here's one statement. That's really what they have to say about TTS begin and commit. There's a little bit more when it talks about transactional integrity and making sure that we don't have TTS begin and commits that don't match up or are in kind of an imbalanced state kind of thing um, where we're update, calling update on data in a different scope. Um, so you can check that out. Um, but I think the main things were covered in this video. So again, make sure that your TTS begin and commits are matching as a pair, treat them kind of like curly braces and you'll be great. Okay, hopefully you've learned something new today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you liked the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.